is straight out of Jersey with Jersey Jay Z. Yo, Greg, can you hear me? I'm here. Can you hear me? I hear you perfect, brother. How you doing? I'm doing good. What are you doing? How's Nothing things? much. Nothing much. Looks like Mike Russo's already in. He said, hey, Greg and Joe. Hey, Mike. What's up, fellas? Mike Russo, how you doing? Good, good. Good's What's going here? on, Mike? Thanks for being here. Thanks for being yeah. here. Is that George? Is that George oh, jumping in, too? No, I got to get off. How do I get, how do I get Bump me off. Bump, Bump you me off. off. <laughs> okay, I'll remove you from stage. You're gone. <laughs> you're banned. There you go. You're you're off stage. George couldn't get. He was in a car. He's driving. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah. So, Greg, what's going on, my man? I had same bullshit. You know, uh, just the same old crap over this way, doing my thing. Yeah. Getting more statues. We find more statues, fixing them up. Uh, wait till you come over to the house this time. You're gonna be like, holy shit! Your girlfriend's <laughs> gonna be like, wow, oh my god, you know. A lot more you're, statues you got. Yeah, a lot more. Holy, oh yeah. Yeah, Hell, yeah, a lot more, definitely. I, I love a, it. Go ahead. I know you do. I know you do. I know you love that stuff. I uh, have a good sound factory story, but I'm going to wait till a couple more people jump on. Okay. Doing great. Never been more pumped. Michael Russo says he's doing great. Never been more pumped. Good. Oh. It's good. You look. You look great, Mike. Looks like you're looking. You're working out. Where, Mike? Where are you from? Where is Mike from? Mike, where are you from? Like, where's your origin? Where you live? Yeah, where you where you live there, Mike. We're gonna be uh, me and Greg are gonna do something. I think in May we're gonna be working out together at his gym. Yeah, definitely. We're you know, yeah, do something. I'm gonna uh, I'm de I get my surgery in May, believe it or not. Oh, you are? Is that official? Yeah, but that's fine. That has nothing to do with us doing the gym thing, you know. Oh, have you talked to the doctor? What yeah, May third. As a, not that's not the surgery date. That's the day I, she's. I get to meet with her, and then she's gonna give me surgery date. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so May third. Okay. Yeah. Because I still got like uh, and everything. Is it City of Champions, uh, Youngstown, Ohio. Wow, Michael. Right. Wow, really? Actually, Michael, um, one of our friends, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, lives right in Youngstown. I'm actually we're good friends with him. I actually text him. He um, he lives in uh, Youngstown, Ohio. So I, I don't know if you know. Here. Yeah, hey, Morella, how you doing? What's going on? What's up, Morella? She's a little bit on the weather, not feeling well. Oh, really? Yeah, what, what's wrong? She got a cold, you mean, and that kind of stuff, or yeah, uh... Uh, yeah, I think so. She had a headache and stuff, you know. Plus, she's dealing with everything with her mother, you know. Oh, so yeah, that's it's... also a tougher situation. <clears throat> I, I see Skip's in here. Skip, hey, what's Skip. up, man? Skip, how you doing, Skip? How you doing, brother? Sean? See, I can see this much better than when I do it, because this is much bigger. Oh, I guess when I do it, it's it's so small. Yeah, I'm able to click them on and make them bigger on the screen for you. Wait, is that you or is that George? That just that's George. Me? George is moder moderating everything for oh, us. Oh, that's right. George is in the <laughs> car, right? Yeah, George is a moderator, yes. Um, so, Greg, I was going to tell you the quick uh, Sound Factory story. we got some people on here. So, okay. um, you know how packed it would get. Packed. So packed. packed. Where being short, all I did was smell everybody's breath and get their sweat. All over, you know, I constantly walk by people with no shirt on. I, did fucking, I was like their fucking sweat towel. But go ahead. So if you had to go to the bathroom, it would probably take you maybe 45 minutes from where you're standing to get to the bathroom and then probably getting into the bathroom, probably about 45 minutes. Could be, yeah, the line, yeah, the big the line. line. It was, and it was packed because the girls and guys- The guys used the same bathroom. Right? the same bathroom, correct. So I was downstairs. Now I know you didn't, you never did any drugs. You never partied like that. You were very clean. Right. <clears throat> I unfortunately partied and did some stuff, you know, whatever. And ecstasy was one of the drugs. And when you take um, ecstasy, and it, once it starts kicking in, something happens to your body where you have to take a shit. Just boom. Oh, you now, were doing ecstasy? Yes. Oh, boy. Okay. Yes. okay. But, you know, a long time ago. But everyone in that club was doing it. You know? Yes, they were. So there was a famous actress who's not as famous today, but she was back in the day. She was downstairs by me. She must have took it. It hit her. And she started grabbing her boyfriend or whoever the guy was. Got to go to the bathroom. Got to go to the bathroom. And the boyfriend's like, I can't. We were trying try to get him through the line, right? Uh -huh. So whatever is going, we were trying to help them go through. Um, who's that? George sent something. George, thank yeah, you. Thanks, George. Thank you, George. Um, as we're going through, she stops. And I'm like 10 feet behind her. Mm -hmm. She pulls down her pants. And she goes right in the corner of the sound factory. P? No. 
Shit. Yes, and her boyfriend took off her shirt for her to wipe herself. Took off his shirt? His yeah. shirt, because remember, everyone no, no more wore shirts. Holy shit. And who was this actress? Can you say her name? I can't. I'll tell you off the air. Okay. I'll tell you off the air. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> I know, but I won't. I'll know, but you guys won't. No. <laughs> I'll tell you off the air, but. No, I know, because you got to watch, because God forbid somebody see yeah. this shit, they'll sue you. Yeah, they'll sue me. Now, she's not as famous anymore, and I think she, she had a lot of problems. And you'll once I tell you, you'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, figures. But she was there, she did it, and her boyfriend took off her shirt, and she wiped herself there. And she was a maniac. And, like, she was crazy. She was out of it. But I, I forgot about that story until my friend said, hey, you're talking about Sound Factory stories. Remember this one? And I said, holy shit, that was a long time ago. And he told me about it. He said, oh, tell Greg about that. I said, yeah, that's a crazy story. So she went right in the corner of Sound Factory, took a big monster shit. <laughs> that's a, was it was it a fat one? I, you know, was it hot? Like, you know, I'm just, I'm just um, Big turd. But, it, was, um, yeah, it was a big turd. No, that's a good story. I like that, especially since it's a celebrity. It is a celebrity, yes. Yes. Like, I don't picture somebody like Ariana Grande or something like that ever taking a shit. Like, she's too sweet. Her ass is so small and cute. Mm -hmm. Nothing bad could come out of there. There's no way she shits <clears> or any of that stuff. No, but this one was – and I was so shocked because I was, like, a couple feet behind her. And I thought she was just going to sit down to try to hold her stomach and relax. But no. She just went, and I, I was looking at myself. I thought, oh, I was like, something's wrong here. It doesn't yeah, seem I've it. seen shit like that before, but when you, it's a celebrity that does that, that makes it a little celebrity. bit more confusing. Girl celebrity. I've seen normal girls do shit, piss, and do all that stuff right there, you know? Mm -hmm. and, yes. You know, when I was in a, we, you know, when I worked for the strip club when I was young, and, I, you know, I was a senior in high school, mm -hmm. they, they used to stay at this place they called the Animal House, you know, because it was crazy. And uh, there was a girl in there, and uh, she brought a dog. Right, she had a dog there, and the dog shit on. There was all newspapers laying down, and the dog <laughs> shit on the newspapers. And this chick was so drunk, she was in her, she was walking barefoot, and she stepped on the shit, and the newspaper stuck to the bottom of her foot, and she was walking around, you know, the whole house like that. Didn't even realize it, you know, like mm -hmm. you understand, like you had a piece of shit, yep. shit to stick it to your bottom of your foot on newspaper. Yep. Uh, let's see, we got Nicholas uh, Fam said, "Hey, Greg and Joe, I'm 28. How much test should I be taking a week? In your opinion, you're young. You should have." Uh... You know, I don't think you should be taking that. Much. I mean, it's a, you're it's a loaded question. I mean, you could take you know. I, I mean, I, I would go with it maybe five to six hundred, something like that. You know, what I mean, I wouldn't go too crazy. You're young again. Yeah. You're gonna start your own testosterone down. It's not gonna come. I know you think twenty eight's old, but that's when shit's starting to dip. You know what I mean? Yep. If you're not going for the look, I'm a firm believer. I love the juice, and I know you know. I never talk shit about the juice. I love this shit. The babanya. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that if you're going to do a hey, Natalia, um, I, 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 I believe Natalia, however, I say, I'm so sorry. I'm so bad with saying names. Sorry, Natalia. Listen, Natalia, yep. <clears throat> um, it, you know, I, I'm a firm believer. If you're not going for like a big show, like, you know, like a big show, you know, now <clears throat> or something like that, I don't think you need all that juice. You know what I mean? Like, mm hmm. The Bobani is best for guys who are going for big shows. You know, I, I take, mm -hmm. a, I took a lot of shit and stuff like that after I was already done competing, but I did it because I was nuts. I don't recommend anybody doing what I did, but you don't really need no. it. 28 years old, unless you're really going for a show and doing all that shit, you know, I would hold out a little bit longer, but you can't tell people what to do. I know these guys today are doing it when they're, you know, 17, 18, but they'll pay for it. Watch when they go off. The, mm -hmm. How many pro bodybuilders you see, you know, I mean, I knew uh, Tom Prince really well. Um, he was a little wacky, but whatever. And he was a monster. If you saw Tom Prince when he was jacked, he was a fuck. I used to see him call him a fucking monster. When he got off the shit, he looked like uh, he 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 looked. He he used to remind me of what's his name there, um, Lance Armstrong. He looked like Lance. He was a beanpole. Wow. I mean, he looked like him in the face to me. But um, I mean, you know, these guys don't even have remnants that they ever lifted a weight. Like if that guy. If Tom Prince would have walked up to you in a club and said, yeah, you're a pretty big guy. You know, I used to be like real – and you look at him like that and you're like, wait, you used to be real big? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you never believe. He'd be like, okay, this is another one of those guys, you know. <clears throat> yep. Stories. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, ben Garcia. What's up, Ben? Hey, how you ben? doing, man? Garcia, how you doing? How you doing? He says, how hey, Greg and Joe, great to see you guys. I'm looking forward to my 2 a.m. training at Crunch. There you Greg go. has it right at that. No crowds, no BS, no tripods, no kids. That's, that's right. The that's the way to go, man. I, I like it li like that. Mm -hmm. That's right, you know. Well, uh, let's see. Natalia says, uh, 
what does she say here? She's like, hey, what do you guys think about Daddy Airlock Lee Priest shit show? Oh, uh, the Lee Priest. That? That's about the, the guy who hit the, oh, cat. the cat. Yeah, I just did a video about it. Let me say really fast a few things. Number one, Lee Priest is an animal lover. I know. He's got all kinds of cats, dogs, fucking rabbits. He's got, he's got everything over that way. Okay, number one. Number oh, two, Lee Priest. Lee Priest is on actually. There he is. There he is. There's my boy. Hey there Lee, if you want to jump on, I'll send you the link. Let me tell you something. Lee is, you know, people don't understand him. He, he he's a huge animal lover. He's got all kinds of animals at his house. His wife, the same thing. He does his wife and him. There's no beating his wife. His he do grew up. His daughter grew up following in his footsteps. So all that crap you heard about that shit, you know, all this shit, he's, he's racist. He dated Adela Garcia, was his girlfriend. He's had black girlfriends. He freaking, you know, the shit that he's homophobic, his father, you know, is gay and he loves his father. So all that shit's bullshit. It's all bullshit. I did a whole video about it. Uh, uh, fuck daddy. Yes. They're all fucking bullshit. They can't take it. They can't take it because he called the guy out. They just can't take it. And, and you know what's funny? Where are all you animal lovers? Most people, you know, like I could kill a human probably easier than I could kill an animal. I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't freaking. I, I love animals. I, I can't hunt. I can't do any of that shit. I kill a rat outside with a trap or something. I feel like, you know, I feel bad for the rat, but fuck that. I can't get in the house, you know? Yeah. I'm and Johnny Bravo did a great video with Lee, too. Johnny Bravo did a phenomenal video. Johnny Bravo did a phenomenal video on Lee. And if you guys see, they don't understand no. that Lee comes from a different culture too. Like when, you know, like down here in Australia, they call each other cunt. You know what I mean? Like you say, yeah, he's a good cunt, that guy. And you're like, yeah. cunt. He said cunt. You know what I mean? Like they don't understand. That's the way they talk. But, but, but Lee is definitely, definitely a passionate guy. And he just said his passion and they're attacking him with a hundred percent lies. Yep. I know Lee's my friend. Lies, he is, you, you people don't understand. Those are all lies. Mm -hmm. And none of that shit's true. He did. Nope. His daughter would not have followed in his footsteps. No, not at all. Okay, She wouldn't be a bodybuilder. She wouldn't be in, in the industry if she didn't look up to her father. Her father paved the way. And they're still very close. I can tell you that for a fact. Yep. Okay. All that shit is bullshit about him. It's all mm -hmm. bullshit. How is he a racist? He was with Adela Garcia, who's yep. dark-skinned Hispanic. I know Adela. Yep. Okay. So he's you can't when you start that racism shit and homophobic you get he's got dude he's got he's, there's proof every one of those things is bullshit about him it's yeah. all lie yeah I'm they're just, just trying to attack Lee they're just trying to uh, attack that's all Lee. It is. it's jealousy and yes. he's still sticking up for this guy yeah. you know what I mean he's these these young internet kids mm -hmm. you know even the kid Sam God bless him he you know he looks good and all that shit but. Could he win the teenage Mr. America? You know what I mean? You know, somebody... I got a special guest jumping on right now. There he is. There Hello. he is, Mr. Lee Priest. What's up, brother? Here's my boy. What's going oh, on? You know, I just finished eating some curry chicken on toast. And... <laughs> <laughs> Man, wife's, she... in, wife's in the kitchen. She's got the day off work, so I put her where she should be in the kitchen. Otherwise, <laughs> I'll beat her ass if she doesn't cook me dinner. If she has two black eyes because she didn't cook dinner, right? So, hey. like if she got two black eyes, that just means she didn't listen the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but Lee, Lee, you have animals over there, right? I mean, you got, I know you got dogs, cats. I mean, I know you, you know, even when you're away, I see you, you call and ask, you, did you feed the dogs? Or she feed the right? Am I right or wrong? Yeah, yeah. I got, um, when I did Johnny's, I did that video with Johnny yesterday. Yep. And my cat, my cat come on. He come on live and sat through the whole podcast. So. Oh, that was a great thing. But people think people don't realize that you love animals and you hate assholes. He's an yeah. asshole. That's, that's the thing, too. The whole, the whole beating on the wife where they say, I put her in hospital. Well, yeah, I've been on ride-alongs, you know, to mm -hmm. wish to go to abused homes. And if you've abu abused a girl and she's just got marks on her, they take you away. So... If my wife was in hospital, almost dead, I think I would have been arrested. So there should be an arrest record. Just mm -hmm. bring it all out. And I, as you said, my daughter's not dumb. I don't think she no. would be coming to visit me and, you know, all this sort of stuff if I had abused her. So mm -hmm. they just got on this little thing. And every post I put up, they're still writing it. Oh, he abused the cat, but you abused a person. That's worse. So you're justifying what he did. Is that what you're trying to do or what? So mm -hmm. then they're like, I ruined his career. It's like, no. I didn't ruin his career. He did it to himself. If you're that dumb to film yourself abusing a cat or here in Australia, we have a lot of young kids at the moment breaking into homes and they're filming it. I'm like, if you're dumb enough to film it and put it on the internet where people are going to see it, that's on you. You ruined your own career. I had nothing to do with it. I just brought it to light. 
And in my mm-hmm. first video, I even said, look, I'm not sure if it's true. I just see it here and that. I'm going to look into it. And then I found out it was true that he was beating the cat, you know, trying to give it pre-workout. So, you know, what's he do? What's he do? People to do that and film it and think it's funny. What's he do that he doesn't film? So, you know, the guy's a piece of shit. So he gets mm-hmm. what he deserves. If he's hanging from the garage roof, I won't cry over it. Mm-hmm. It's 100% right, man. I, I don't like, listen, I got to be honest with you. I'm not a cat lover. I'm actually allergic to cats. Mm-hmm. I saw somebody touching a cat or abusing a cat. I don't like any animals. I can't, like, I can't hunt. I can't do any of that shit. I would fucking go after them. If I saw them abusing a cat, I, I don't like it's that. It's like, it's like anything, a cat or a child, they're innocent, you know, and right. really an animal, you know, depending mm-hmm. on the age of a child, at some point, if you're a teenager, you can try and defend yourself a bit depending on the situations, but an animal is totally defenseless. You see videos where I've seen dogs get the shit kicked out of them and abused. You know, I used to work at the animal shelter and volunteer there and the dogs would come in abused and sometimes you'd see the footage of what happened to them and they still wag their tail at the owner, like trying to give the owner love after this person's just flogged the shit out of it. So, you know, these animals, like I can see people on videos kill each other. I'm like, eh, typical <laughs> humans, they probably fucking deserved it, but I'm like, Greg, if I see someone abusing an animal on video, I'm like, fuck, that's just... If I saw a person, I would definitely go after the guy. You know, I would, yeah. I would not like that. You know what I'm saying? I hey, not- get back to the kitchen or I'll beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you better get back. <laughs> I don't hurt you all the time. That's the only pussy I've ever beaten up, let me tell you anyway. <laughs> Maybe that's what they meant. Hold on. She wants to say Hold on. You may speak. Thank you. Go Sarah. ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. You got five minutes. Go. This is probably <laughs> super hated because I know how much people love you. Yeah. But in the new six years of marriage, who is the only person who's ever closed their fist and hit the other one? You punch me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I only did it once. She only did it once. No. I think. I think we was wrong. more beatings until he starts getting things right. But I know there were. There was an issue in the past, and I'm not going to mention the person. The police were called, and they found out it was all lies and bullshit anyway. So Yes. I had an ex-girlfriend who tried to say I hit her, and they found out it was all lies from the text messages and that. But it cost me 8000 in court fees to prove oh, that she was oh. lying. So. Didn't she text? Like, yeah. Yeah. I, she goes, she sent me text saying, I'm sorry I called the police. I was angry at you, but you've been nothing nice to me. You've always taken care of me and the kids and blah, blah, blah. So I got thrown out of court, but it still cost me $8,000. Even when the police come to see me, I said, wait a minute, she punched me. Oh, it doesn't matter. I said, we well, do you need my side of the story? And this police woman's like, no, that'd be like he said, she said. I said, well, you need my side of the story. I was the one that was abused. I'm the one that called the police. She goes, it doesn't matter. Then this police woman even said to me, I don't care if she drops the charges. I'm still coming after you. I'm like, what, because of the tattoos and muscle? But ended up, I had to go to court three times and cost 8000 But, yeah, I've never, never punched or abused anyone. But you hit me, didn't you? I thought it was foreplay. Sorry. You don't have to say sorry now. You said sorry. <laughs> I know, but it's the was guilt horrible. coming out. The guilt coming out. Oh, you can make gonna, it up. Go you can make it up later. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Get back to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You've got to speak to him like that sometimes. Spank that ass. Have spank. Yeah. Yeah, Lee needs a spanking. This time when you hit him, put a ball and gag in his mouth and then spank him. <laughs> <laughs> have any of the trolls been uh, writing to you, uh, Lee? Uh, like, some of those. Are they still on the attack? Oh, yeah. I put up a new video today, or I put up a thing of where it got me in a Superman shirt. He abused a cat. You're a wife abuser. They're all generally private accounts, or they're just new ones with no face in them. The yep. ones that I can see, let me tell you, I have never seen, and, you know, I'll use the word, but might get in trouble, the F word for gay people. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. you know, as Greg said, I've got a gay father, and I love him, and i got nothing against gay people. My cousin's a transsexual. We had great times. Not those sort of great times. <laughs> you know, it's like, I love everyone, but, you know, these people, you know, you're talking about broccoli-haired twinks, we'll call them, because they look like twinks with broccoli hair. And it's mm-hmm. like, every one of them, like, why do you follow? I can see why you follow Aoli. You're probably in love with him. You all look like dick riders, so... <laughs> It's just funny because then they call you racist because you said that. But, but meanwhile, you dated Adela Garcia, who's dark skinned. Yeah. And, and I had my wife, Rain, who, who lived in Chicago. She was a colored South African. That's what she calls herself colored because she was mixed. So she was dark. Right. And she was a Muslim. So that gets rid of the Lee hates Muslim. She was a Muslim dark lady from South Africa. Melvin Anthony asked him a question once in an interview. Is Lee racist? He's like, what? He goes, before I turned pro and I was out in Venice, he goes, I had nowhere to go. I had no food. 
Lee took me in, gave me food, gave me supplements. When Paul Delette split with his wife, none of his other mates would take him in. I let Paul Delette come in and stay with me for eight months. Kurt Miller, my best friend, I call him a brother because I met him the very first day I came to L.A. He was in Golds and I just worked in with him. We hit off straight away. He lived with me. I lived with him. He come to Australia. And he's black and he's from Iowa. His father was a like a minister in Iowa. But people used to annoy me back then because to me, I don't see colour. Yes, I can, see, I can see you got dark skin or if you're Asian or whatever. But to me, I see the person and how you treat me and how I treat you. I go by the character, not their fucking thing. But I got called racist once because I was talking about Kurt and someone goes, what's Kurt? I'm like, Kurt, he's, he's my friend. He's, he's my brother. But what is he? I'm like, what do you mean what is he? But is he black, white? I said, well, he's black, but I don't see that. I just see Kurt. What? You don't see his colour? You're a racist, and if you don't see his colour, I'm like, well, why would I see his colour? Yes, I can see his dark skin, but it's still Kurt to me, but you're right. a racist. I'm, I'm sorry. surprised people didn't say you brought all these black bodybuilders to live with you because you were using them like slaves and stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Like <laughs> hey, <laughs> let me tell you, I used to clean up after the pool. I clean up after Paul all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. shit. dude, do you remember when Donald Trump was running for president the last time? And they were saying that the liberals were saying, you know, because he had his daughter on his lap. They said he sexually abused his daughter yeah. and sexually abused his wife and mm -hmm. he used to beat her and stuff. Do you think that his sons would still be there and his yeah. daughter, they would still be close to him if he did something to their wife, to their mother? What, what these people don't think, and then they say, what is, doesn't like the Jewish people yet, what is, son-in-law is Jewish, he's got Jewish <laughs> grandkids, so it's like, the whole thing about he's racist too. Now, how long has Donald Trump been in the media for, and he had, he had that recording, grab him on the pussy? You don't <laughs> think he said one racist thing or the N-word, and it was there, oh. and they would, they would have it? Come on. We got plenty of recordings of Biden being racist. So. I have yeah. I've downloaded the videos of Biden saying the N word, and no, and it's you know they're no longer on YouTube, but I have them. You know what I'm saying? He was the, come on, Biden was with the you know he was with the freaking grand poobah there. You know what I'm saying? Of of the you know that was you know Robert Byrd, who was the head of the uh, oh, Ku Klux Klan, yeah. their number one recruiter for new Ku Klux Klan, yeah. was his mentor, and back then. Joe Biden used to say, I don't want my kids going to school with super predators, calling black people super predators. You yeah. know, remember even Kamala Harris said. Uh, you, didn't, he, didn't he say, too, that the schools would turn into like a jungle and all this sort of stuff? Yeah, they were, they, I don't want my kids going to a jungle. Did he, Kamala Harris even accused him of racism, saying, I'm one oh, of yeah. the kids that you, <laughs> and, you know, that you bust a black kid, that you bust out of there. So, and now she's, <laughs> but it was a debate. It's so crazy. Yeah, they just. Nowadays, sadly, it's like, you know, the rape accusation because, you know, before it used to be, sometimes now you don't know if these women are lying because they just make, make up these rape accusations. It happened to a mm -hmm. few football players here. Came out to be false. They agreed to it. But because mm -hmm. they had sex and the guy said to her, oh, you're just a one night stand. Well, I'll show you. She goes to court. And I said, to me, I hate that because it makes a mockery of real rape victims. Just like now, throwing the race card at any little thing makes a mockery out of real racism that, you know, sometimes still goes on. It's not like the Democrats have you believe that everyone's walking around in fucking white sheets and burning crosses on their front lawn. That's what they want you to think, that every American back in the day owned the slaves. It was in the South. It was like 4%. Only in the, the rest, South. The mm -hmm. rest of America didn't agree with slavery. Did they forget it was all the white, it was all the white people mm -hmm. to come together to help free the slaves? England mm -hmm. back in 18-something started abolishing the slaves. It was the Africans that were selling the slaves to the white people. It's like, come on, every every race has had some sort mm -hmm. of slavery happen to them. It's like before we even traveled, I said it before, before Australians left Australia, before the English or whoever, the Spanish come to America, you had yep. the Navajo, you had the Sioux Indians, you had the Cherokee. They used to slaughter each other. They used to kill each other and make slaves out of each other. In Africa, all the different tribes would slaughter each other. But yet when the white man comes, you come here and slaughtered us. You were slaughtering before we even got there. So it's just like, you know, divide and conquer. The stronger people are always going to come in. It happened back, you know, in the old days. English clans would kill each other. Then the Vikings would come over and try and kill the English. It's been going on since the dawn of time. So stop living in the past, people. Learn from the past and move on. Because even um somebody come back saying, Lee, I can't believe you said that. And look, I've always said slavery was bad no matter what race you are. But Absolutely. I said, not everyone in America 
came from slaves, but the ones that did come from slaves who are in America today, I said a slave, as much as it was bad and you go on about, on about it, you should be just that little bit thankful. Not that they were slaves, but they came over that way because when they were set free, they went out around America. They started families and you were born. You're born in one of the greatest countries in the world now where you can be whatever you want to be. If you're not where you want to be, it's not because you're black. It's because of your fucking attitude and the fucking playing the victim. Look in the mirror. That's the person holding you back. It's well, not Whitey. It's not anybody else. It, do people always say we stole the land from the Native Americans. Nobody stole any land. First of all, land is, you know, it's not like yeah. that. But the, first of all, Vikings were here before the Indians. And, and Amer excuse me, Native Americans. And not only, not only that, but the Native Americans had more slaves than anybody. They mm -hmm. used to, intro they would go and get another tribe and enslave that whole tribe. They, they used to get whites. And how many women, you still see that chick with the fucking lines that they enslaved, they used to enslave white women. And, and, and but it's been going. Well, look at, well, look at, look at back at the Ottoman Empire. Look how many slaves they used to have. And today, they've actually, I watched a statistic on some show where in some of these countries now, there's more slaves today than there ever was. Why aren't all these people on about that? All these sports stars that are claiming America's a racist country, yet you got hundreds of millions in your bank account. Tell me again how America's a racist yeah, country. Find fans. me find me another country like Australia or America that you're gonna have better life at, you know, all your freedoms. Go live in Russia, China, try some of that shit there and see what happens to you. So people just need to wake the fuck up and appreciate what they have because yep. yes. Like, you get illegal people coming in, which I don't agree with, but if somebody's come in the right way, whether they be from India or Mexico, and they take your job, don't complain about it. You could have had that job, but you're too fucking lazy. Everyone wants a handout. And I think it's like here in Australia, same as I noticed in America, if you're born there, we take it for granted. We take for granted all these opportunities and what we have around us. So you get somebody that comes from a third world country where they've been in wars, they come to America, they're like, Oh my God, I can't believe the freedom you have. I can't believe I can go do this. I can't. And that's why they prosper because they get in and do the hard work and make something of themselves while everybody else just sits around bitching about fucking pronouns and what sex they're going to be and all this bullshit. Look mm -hmm. at the Chinese. They're like one of the highest in above white people when it comes to getting jobs and education and money and all that sort of stuff. So mm -hmm. I think we're just sitting around playing victims too much these days and we're all on handouts. It when you know. It goes back to what you said before about the divide and conquer. So I tell everybody, mm -hmm. even the thing that they just had, Transgender Day on fucking Easter. First of all, does everybody need a day? Okay. When when Obama came out and said, you know, transgender women can use the bathroom. Well, I hate yeah. to tell you, I've been around them motherfuckers for a long time. They've been using a female bathroom since I was a kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> it started with Stonewall. I know. You know? Mm -hmm. Back in the 60s and shit like that. All that shit they've been you go to the sound factory. There were trannies getting blowjobs in the freaking in the stalls. You know what I mean? It was freaking girls and boys all fucking mm -hmm. around in the stalls. You know, the, the, the bathrooms are unisex back then. Joe just talked about that. Yep. You know, what I mean? this is in the 90s, man. Nice. So, yeah. it, it's all about dividing conquer. You know what I realized? It's just like you know what the you know what the liberal democrats are? It's like mm -hmm. it's like when you threw a fart when you were a kid and you blamed everybody else. You know, he who smelt the delta. Yeah. You know what I mean? He denied it, supplied it. They Everything that they are, they point the finger at everybody else and say, you're a racist. Yeah. You're a racist. Well, you're white too, uh, Biden. Your own vice president called you a racist. So you're a racist. Why don't you just come out and say, look, I'm a racist. You know what I mean? Don't call yeah. me a racist. My kids are freaking part black. You know what I mean? Their mother, my my ex-wife is mulatto. That's why, that's why I always laugh at people because I'm so honest about stuff. If I was mm -hmm. racist, I'd say, here I am. I am racist, but it yeah. doesn't mean I'd hurt someone of a different race or different color. But if you say I'm racist, I'm racist. I'd I'd go along with it and be, agree with you. I'd be like, yep, yeah, that's the way I was brought up. That's the way I am. Mm -hmm. You're not going to change me. And I used to have a friend who was he was from down the south area, but he wasn't racist. But people would say he was because he just believed. He has a daughter, and he told me once. He goes, Lee, if I have my preference, I'd prefer my daughter to marry a white person. He goes now. I don't care if she falls in love with a black man, Hispanic, a Chinese, and she marries him and she's happy, I'm happy for her. But my preference, he prefer a white. And people are like, oh, he's racist. I'm like, why? That's just his preference. I said, why is it Chinese people generally marry Chinese people? They get kicked out of the family. Indian people and so many other people have these arranged marriages where you have to marry your race or your religion. But that's classed as, oh, that's just how they are. But if a white person says that, you're racist. It's like, come on. <laughs> Lee, let me ask you a question. What do you think about, like, every movie, 
Every commercial now is mm -hmm. a dumb white guy with a you know with a smart chick or or oh, a yeah. and white or a Spanish and white, which I don't give a shit. My girlfriend's from Mexico, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? My my kids are purple again, mm -hmm. my wife is mulatto. But what they're doing is they're pushing, they're shoving this shit up your ass. It's in all the movies, it's in all TV shows. Every time a new TV show comes on, a new series, as soon as the first episode's on, I say to my wife, okay, let's guess which one's going to be gay, trans, which one's going to be this. It's like they've got a quota now. <laughs> it's in every show, every movie, commercials, all of it. And this whole they're representation, right. they were represented before. How many movies came out years ago? Mrs. Doubtfire. That's pretty much cross-dressing, wasn't it? It was right. like a trans. But it was had... Remember the birdcage with um birdcage, right? With that, that little actor, that little guy, I forgot his yeah. name. Um, he, Lane, he he real life. Nathan, Nathan Lane, and um, my name mm -hmm. is Robert oh, okay, Williams. Yes. They were the mm -hmm. gay neighbors, and then it's like you know, they were like funny as hell in that. Then you had as good as it gets, remember, with Jack Nicholson and Greg Kinnear. He's like, ah, that's my fag neighbor. There's a lot of jokes about it, but we all laughed. There's been tons mm -hmm. of stuff, but mm -hmm. it's just in there, and you just accepted it, no one cared. But now you can see they're pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. That's ridiculous. It's like just no, just let it go back to how it was, and then they say, "Oh, we need representation." It's like you know what? When I grew up, I used to love Bruce Lee. I had all the Bruce Lee books. Me I watched too. every oh, Bruce Lee yeah. movie there was, or even the old Shogun, like samurai <laughs> movies. And guess what, people? There wasn't one white person in those movies. They're all Chinese, Japanese, Asians, and I loved them. I didn't sit there going, "Oh, I don't like this movie because there's not enough white people in it. I can't relate." It's a fucking movie. You watch it for entertainment. It could just be about, I watch a movie about robots. Oh, there's no fucking real people in this. I can't relate. It's like, I need to be represented in a movie. Get the fuck out of here. You know what, Lee? You know what you're, what you're saying? It makes sense, too, because you know why? Look, when the story's the story. Santa Claus mm -hmm. is a Nordic man. It's, a, it's yeah. come from a Nordic mm -hmm. But when you see an Asian Santa Claus or a black Santa Claus, I get it. You're trying to relate to young kids. But that's not the story. When you mm -hmm. get now Captain America's a woman, you know what I mean? Come on. You know, mm -hmm. 007 is going to be a black woman. You know, they wanted it to be a black woman. Now I think it's going to be a gay man. But whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, come on. You're taking the story and you're changing it. I know. Yeah. It's like the Little Mermaid. They had to do like a black version. And they had to do the seven dwarfs and not use dwarfs. It's like... Why don't you just make new characters instead of changing James Bond to a black man, a gay man, a woman? Just make a new spy movie, make a new agent. How hard is that to do? Just make a whole new character. Mm -hmm. like, but you got to stick with the story. You can't do. You can't have like George yeah. Washington was black or something. You can't well, look at look at Halle Berry. She did um, what was that other one? What's that movie about um, Catwoman? No, no, there was a queen. No, Halle Berry did the Cleopatra TV show, made Cleopatra black, but then um. There was another one about Anne Boleyn. You know Anne Boleyn, the queen that had her head cut off? She was oh, a yeah. white woman. But on mm. the TV series, she's black. I'm like, how can you take a historical figure? That'd be like doing, let's do the story on Martin Luther King and we'll get Liam Neeson to play Martin Luther King. That would go <laughs> fucking ape shit about it. Like if it's an actual character in real life, you can't yep. change their color or race I, because it's like, come on. <laughs> I agree with you. Just like Jesus Christ did not have blonde hair and blue eyes. And I agree with that. He was Arabic. He probably hey, hey, Osama bin Laden. You're, 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 you're looking at him. You're looking at him. I am Jesus. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just saying like, you know, it's all about the divine and conquer. They know, you know, like if you were a kid in school, I used to say this all the time. If you were a kid in school and a teacher said, you know, okay, Lee, Lee, you don't have to do anything. The rest of you kids all got to do your homework. Lee, tomorrow you get to go on recess. The rest, the rest of the kids, you you all have, you got to stay in school. Lee, mm -hmm. I bought you a big bag of candy. The rest of you kids, mm -hmm. you don't get nothing. You know what happens? The rest of the kids start looking at you and say, "I fucking hate him." And that's mm -hmm. what they want to do. They don't. They're not really trying to promote transgenderism. They mm -hmm. hate them, so they want you to hate them by showing. Look, we're gonna have Transgender Day. How do you feel about that? Remember what mm -hmm. I said? In the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Bigger, stronger, faster. The guy you see that has the thumb up here has got the middle finger. That's what they're doing. They want you to hate those people. Well, what about Huntington Beach? Huntington Beach is where they just stopped the pride flag being flown on government buildings. And now I saw all these really? gay people. Oh, this is so much hate. There's this. It's like, no, wait a minute. You have the state flag on the government buildings and the American flag. You can't have the pride flag because then somebody else is going to want their flag and somebody yeah. want their flag. Oh, yeah. For a special occasion like National Pride Day or they get a whole week, then you can put the flag up. But they leave it up all the time. Everyone's going to want a flag then. It's just ridiculous. But yeah. the way they come out saying 
this is bad for the gay people in this town. We're going to get beat. We're going to get bashed. Come on, knock off the fucking oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, though. The gay flag is almost like the black national anthem. You're you're yeah. actually telling black people that you're not American. You got to have your own yeah, national anthem. Exactly. Like, you're not one of us. See, that's it. Yeah. That's a trick to the, the, the oh, night yeah. black people. Are like, see that we have our own national anthem now. No, you're yeah. an American, you fool. You know yeah. what? You're the the blacks were the ones who raised the flag in a civil war. Do mm-hmm. you know that Lincoln? Uh, uh, one of the things about Lincoln freeing the slaves was so that they can fight in a civil war, and they did, and mm-hmm. they. Made the difference you fucking fools you're following yeah, yeah. you're following fucking satan you're not following jesus you're following the wrong one you think oh look we got a black national anthem you're an american you're you want that's equality why, that's why i love the black Come americans on. that's why i love the black americans who say listen i'm not african-american i was born here i'm right. a black american that's it just like mm-hmm. you, i don't say i'm australian english irish i say i'm australian you are where you're born if you uh, have Hispanic parents that came from Mexico and you're born in America, you're an American. You're not Hispanic American. You're an American. As simple as that. You don't bring in every, you know, country your ancestors come from going through the ancestral tree. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, but if you talk to a real African, they'll tell you that's not one of us because no. they're actually totally different. And the other thing. Well, here's too- the thing. What's that? I had a friend that come from Africa. I had a friend that come from Africa because his family used to do like missionary work over there and stuff and they lived there the whole time so they actually like lived there they were born his family didn't go from there they were born there so he was born there as they grew up his family moved to america and he got his green card so technically he has an african passport because he's from there but now he's american but he's white so can he say he's african-american because he was born in africa he has the passport and now he's an american (laughs) citizen but because he's white what if he says he's african-american but it's like, hey, he's more African American than you black people because he was fucking born there. Like Gary Stridham. Wasn't Gary Stridham born in uh, South yeah, Africa? South Africa, yeah. He's yeah. probably African American if you got his green. Basically African American. And he's you know, got. They're, they're, they're saying it's a color, are they? African Americans are color. It's not actually. A... <laughs> Malik, what about what about what uh, I like what uh, what's his name? Morgan Freeman says, why do you got to call me oh, a black yeah. man? Why can't you yep. just say I'm a man, you're a man? Yep. We're men. Yeah. You know, why do you have to identify. Like people? I said about my friend <laughs> Kurt when they asked me about my friend Kurt. What is he? I said, he's Kurt. Well, mm-hmm. you, I, like I said, he's black, but I don't see that. I see Kurt. I don't see the skin color. Well, you're being racist if you don't acknowledge his color. I'm like, I acknowledge the person and how he treats me and his character. The skin color, shit, I could sit in the sun all day and go a lot darker and brown, but, you know, it doesn't matter. Who gives a shit? It's like, I don't get the whole fixation on, well, you know, like I said, since Biden's come in and you watch those cackle hens on The View and all those other mm-hmm. people on CNN, I'm just watching them, that Joy Reid, I'm just thinking, how can you people sit there on TV and just spout bullshit? But what gets me is a lot of the Americans who just focus on that one TV show believe all the shit that they're saying. Look That's- how many people after after the election come out and said, oh, if we had known about the Hunter Biden computer thing, we wouldn't have voted for Biden. The way they twist the narrative, the way they, if Trump's doing a live thing, CNN goes, we're not going to show this just in case he says untruths and lies. We're going to sort of watch it and we'll let you know if you need to know anything. It's like, let the people make up their own minds. It's like, you know, they had that one woman from the RNC that kicked off MSNBC oh, because the host, yeah. yeah. Like, we don't want her yep. on here. We don't want her on. Mm-hmm. It's like, why wouldn't you want somebody on there with a different opinion so you can debate? But, you know, people don't debate anymore. If you've got a different idea to them, they just attack you and shit like mm-hmm. that. No one has a decent debate. They just Honestly, try to, to an argument, I want Lee's opinion on this. Okay. Yes. Okay. How about fucking Robbie Robinson still, Robbie Robinson still claiming that Joe Weider didn't like blacks, which is a total lie. Oh, cool. Himself was on the cover of Muscle and Fitness. Bill Grant, who I'm friends with, was on the cover of Muscle and Fitness. I knew Ben Weider. I still got Ben Weider's cell phone number in my cell phone. Okay. Yeah. I knew Joe Weider. They were great guys. They were not racist at all. They had fucking, yeah. you had a lot of blacks from Serge Nubre right. to even uh, even fucking Sergio Oliva. There were plenty of black men who were involved. I mean, he had Lee Haney. Uh-oh. Had, Uh-oh. Fucking, Uh-oh. fucking Sean Ray. Careful, Lee, got- Sean Ray is a teenager. Oh. On flat. Let, me just, let me just see what's in here. Uh-oh. Be careful, Lee. <laughs> That's actually... <laughs> That's you gotta watch for a couple seconds she's now. Bringing me, she's bringing me a lemon drink with vodka in it. A lemon. <laughs> You've been drinking. You've been drinking. What's in that drink? Seven. She's been drinking tequila since seven a.m. There you go. <laughs> well, 
Keep My girlfriend's Mexican, so she can't do this. She's watching this out on the TV because I got the YouTube on the TV. She saw me rubbing my eye because it's stinging, so probably where you beat me. Oh. <laughs> so she brought me this salt salt water thing for my eye. Oh, it's not salt water. Crying, you're upset, it's, worse. Huh? it's probably got, it's got ground glass in it. I'm yeah. Kidding. No, I had like I put some cream on my head, and when I sweat at the gym, I think it went into my eye. Oh shit! I get that sometimes because I put lotion on my face because I yeah. tan, and then it goes in my eye. But hey, look who's here! My kitty's here. Look, come in. Uh oh, where's your kid? Where's the kitty? Come here, come on, come on. Hey, what's hey, the name hey. of the cat, Lee? Kylo. Kylo. Hey. Kylo Ren. You want to say hello to everybody? Where are you going? Come well, on. Lee, what do you think about that? Because that pisses me off when Robbie says that. Because he's been on so many covers oh, of Muscle well, Fitness. It's like it's like the whole thing. I was laughing because they had um going about Trump with the Bible. He's not a religious person. He is this, but then it's like that one person goes. His ex-wife even said he had that mind comp book there, blah, blah, blah. He's like racist. I'm thinking Joe Weider was Jewish. Like Ben Weider loved Napoleon. Joe Weider loved Hitler. He had so much stuff on Hitler. He had all the books on Hitler as a Jewish person. So what are you going to say? Oh, Joe Weider was racist and he's like a thing because he likes Hitler. He didn't like Hitler. He just liked to learn about Hitler. So he had all the books and everything on Hitler. So well, Wait a minute. You want to talk about Donald Trump? Trump? Donald Trump's daughter's Orthodox Jew. His, mm -hmm. his grandkids used to go on Air Force One with yarmulkes on their head, and then they're trying to say he's Hitler. Uh, he's he's a, he's a Nazi. So Donald Trump's the first Jew love a Nazi. He adores his daughter. His, mm -hmm. his boys even on on Father's Day made jokes. Oh, you know, here's you know, Don, you know, about? when you know, like his favorite. We got it. We, we got a bit worried Christmas morning when. Dad said, come on, family, shower time. We're like, oh, well, we don't want to go to the shower. We know what happens in there. <laughs> Robbie Robinson was paid 50000 a year. It was publicized. Oh, yeah, dude, don't believe him. He's a fucking liar. He's nuts, bro. Joe I know Weider. Joe Weider wasn't ra racist. Well, Joe Weider was not racist. I knew Joe, and I, again, I knew Ben. And there's no way. And Joe, Joe loved Lee Haney. Lee Haney got a lot of coverage. Lee Haney, that. all of them, though. Sean Ray was big on him. How many times was he yeah. on Muscle and Fitness? Flex when yeah. he was a teenager. When mm -hmm. Sean Brett was a teenager, he was on the cover yeah. of Flex. Did they, did, they, did, they, did they not realize when I was with Weeder back in the day, if you look at all the lineups, I was probably the only white guy in the top six at the majority of shows. I used to always oh, say yeah. IFBB, International Federation of Black mm -hmm. Bodybuilders. I was always the standout. I'd always go, which one doesn't belong? I'd always be the white guy standing up there. So right. the whole thing about Joe being racist, the sport being racist, they won't let this guy win because he's – Black or because he's like Rami's from Egypt doesn't matter. If you're the best person on stage, the judges don't see color and race and all the other no. bullshit. So stop making excuses. Come on, it's like, dude, no. dude Chris Dickerson was black and gay, and he won yeah. the and he was on the cover of Muscle. Hey, I, remember, I remember the time I was in Golds doing leg curls, and one of the first times I met Chris Dickerson, I was doing leg curls, and I just heard this, mm, mm, stop that, Lee. I'm like. What? And I turned around, Chris Dickens was standing behind me while I was doing leg curls in my white tights. He's like, so good. I, just, I just got up laughing and go, oh, well, I guess that's a feather in my cap that I turned on Mr. Olympia. <laughs> hey, hey, Lee, are you doing the confessions tomorrow? Some people want to know. Uh, yes, yes. At 6 a.m. I'm doing the Dave show and then I'm doing the confessions a couple of hours after that. Yeah, well, these guys don't understand. You're in Australia, so it's our time. It's going to be there on a regular yeah. time. I text, well, I 11, text Jimmy. I actually text Johnny Bravo was going to join us. Yeah. It's 11, it was Johnny it's Bravo. 11, what happened, right? Uh, couldn't. 11.42 a.m. here now on a Friday. Oh, I'm going to say Saturday. It's Friday. See, we're, th we're still Thursday. It's only 8. We're still Thursday, 8.42. Yeah. yeah. So, but, I mean, like all that shit with Robbie. Mm -hmm. Such bullshit. I couldn't believe that he says that shit. He himself has been on a cover. I have all no. most witnesses with him on a cover. So how can you say that? He said, he actually said one time that Joe Weider told him no black man will ever be on a cover of, of, of my magazines. What well, bullshit you were on a cover? What are you talking about? You know, know. He, he stars of Pump and Iron, for Christ's sake. You're in every one of the outtakes of Pump and Iron. <laughs> it's a what, lunacy. This guy is fucking shot. Dude, I went to uh, one time I was in Gold's Gym. This is like 81. He was in his underwear upstairs, you know, the fucking, you know, upstairs yeah. where the locker room is. So I go yeah. upstairs 
And, uh, you know, he was sitting there staring in a locker. I went downstairs, trained for like two and a half hours, went back upstairs. He was still sitting in his underwear, staring in the same locker. Tanya and I told me that she was at a party, right? She goes, it was a pool party. It was like 100 degrees outside. There were, everybody was swimming in the pool. As she got there, Robbie was sitting in the living room, like just fanning himself off, watching a TV that was turned off. She said after the pool party, hours later, they had barbecued us that day. They go inside, and Robbie's still sitting in front of that TV with no TV on, <laughs> just sitting there like this. He's a fucking nut, bro. He's a nut. Yes, I mean, yes, Ben. What's that? Ben Garcia, yes. Ben Garcia. Hopefully, hopefully this year there'll be a reunion back in Jersey. I got to go back and eat the leftover roast beef sandwich. Yes. Put in the freezer. <laughs> me, Jim, me uh, Lee, and Jimmy, we're gonna have a reunion this yeah, time. Reunion. This time we're gonna make Jimmy eat the Lee Priest pasta. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We'll that would be pretty good. And, gonna, the, and the raw and the raw roast beef sandwich is in the freezer still. We're gonna mm-hmm. get it out. If you guys now Joe was there, okay, you guys watching this, Joe was there. If you saw Lee's face when he opened up that sandwich I gave him, it was a roast beef bread, <laughs> and there was actually blood from the roast beef there. Lee, Lee's like, what the fuck? He's like, what the fuck? He was talking to me like, this shit. This looks normally, like- normally I see butter soaking through the bread, not the blood. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Did they even cook it? I'm like, it wasn't even I didn't go cook it on the stove. But Lee, had, Lee actually stood above me like, no, cook that shit more. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. he, was like, he was like, this looks like some woman. It just had an abortion, and that's her vagina lips. I was like, holy shit. Remember that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was funny. That looked, that looked like that looked like my ex Mrs. face just after I beat her. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say that someone's going to cut that and go, listen, yeah, put Lee, it on just there. Yeah, exactly. Lee just admitted on the podcast that he beat her. Yeah, that he, 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 beat her. Roast beef he, beat her, he beat her with his penis. It's a vagina. Yeah. That's he, got, he got more statues, Lee. He added more statues. Oh, Lee, I got about, since you were at my house, I probably got uh, about 15 more statues. You're going to gag. Where'd you put them? <laughs> See, I got, you're gonna love them they're crazy i got some crazy ones they're right, some are right here she lucia was painting i can't turn because you won't be able to see it this is you know this is a fucking what do you That's call right. it lucia, lucia is fixing up the ears on them and the hands and the eyes and the <laughs> uh-huh. oh, we fix it oh, i got some big ones bro you're gonna love them but yeah, uh yeah, yeah i saw kind of that good. guy daddy alone i saw a couple of his troll fans said that they think, oh, Lee's jealous of this guy. I'm like, oh, no, yeah. What? Yeah. What? Lee's jealous of this guy. Yeah. Dude, dude, that's one of the greatest bodybuilders ever. Probably the greatest my point. bodybuilder ever. That guy can't even fucking win a local show around here. No. I was natural, and I could have beat that fucking yeah. guy. You got to be out of your Who, who actually, time. apart from the Mexicans, who actually probably in America has even heard of this person until I've I never mentioned heard of this cat video? Never heard of if, if anything, if anything, I made him more famous with the outside yes, you world. Did. You did. I never heard of him before. I never even heard of that company, that young LA shit. I never heard of that company. That's the reason I brought it up too, because Jay Jay's with Young LA, and there's been a few people with it. I know Jay has his two dogs. He's got his pet peanut butter and that, and yep. Jay loves animals. That's why. <laughs> that's why I brought it up because I figured. Why? Why would Jay stand for this guy being with a company if he's abusing yeah. animals? So. He should have gave that fucking cat some of that peanut butter to let it choke on that shit. Who the yeah. fuck is an animal peanut butter? Fucking peanut butter sticks in my throat when I eat it's it. Like it. Like animal. It's like an animal healthy one. You can have it for people too, but I think it's made so animals can have it. It's called pet butter. Jay Cutler's pet butter. Yeah. Yeah. Where's your wig, Greg? You put your little broccoli wig. I on. Had that. Did you see the other day? I put that wig on like that yeah. kid. That other kid. What, what was his name? There? Uh, here I'll show you. Hold on. Oh, thank Same. you, Nicholas. After five years of watching Greg and Lee and Jimmy, and I have an Italian and Australian when I talk to people, and I am Asian. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's a good combination! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good combination, you know. I actually, it's was funny that when you sometimes see, like, I remember sometimes when I go to Ireland or somewhere, you mm-hmm. see an Asian person that was born in Ireland have this thick Irish accent, and it just seems so weird because generally, yeah. Asians have a bit of Asian accent, so you see an Asian person with this real thick, you know, Irish mm-hmm. accent, or yeah. accent. It just doesn't look right. It just seems no, funny. It, it doesn't look like, right like, too. It's like even if you, you know, you don't want to say yeah, good, you, oh, there right. he is. You go, hey. That Mexican kid that did that, that with that hair. Like, ah! All I need now is a baseball hat, and I could be Sam Salik, right? Yeah, really. Yeah. I used to have I used to have this hair when I was young. Fuck, I don't have it no more. What do you, you think? Look like, you look a bit like a younger Howard Stern now. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> there goes my freaking. There goes your glasses. Yeah, there's my Like glasses. Howard Stern. Look at that. It looks like Howard Stern up there. Howard Stern. 
Oh my God. Now you made me really take it off. I get the nose, but not the, um, <laughs> there's yeah, some kid good. that looked like it, that has that same hair that was Spanish or something was going off and they were going off on them on after hours. I don't know who the hell. Uh, Jim, Jimmy's Jimmy. in Florida. Is he? Yeah. That's what he told me. He, he said, told me he, he, was said he was going down there. Was he driving something down again? Or He did say he was going to be heading that way, but normally if he does that, I normally hear from him or he sends some type of photo or, yeah, he told me on. Or he's like, I'm done. Fuck this traffic. I'm done. You know, Jimmy, you, you always get a message from somewhere. Yeah, he told me on Monday or Tuesday. He was Tuesday. He was going to. Uh, yeah, Florida. I don't. He's. Uh, he might not be there yet because he. I think he's still got to do some work and shit. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Yeah, he's got work. What's up, Ruben? So maybe by the weekend. Who knows? Maybe. You know? Hey, yeah. Ruben, what's going on? Yeah, Johnny Bravo said he was going to jump on with us next time. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Cause Johnny Bravo. He did a great interview with Lee. That was great. Yeah, I thought that was great too. He's he did, like, he did, that, he did that. that. He did that first video good, and then also want to give a shout out to um Matt Truck. You know Matt Truck. He did yeah, a Matt good Truck, video yeah. as well. So yeah, Matt Truck. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, they, they they tried. He even looked back at one. He's like they're trying trying to say Lee's racist, and he put up something, and he goes, "He's not racist." So Matt Truck gave a good. Gave a good video on it. Stupid statement. I mean, again, you know, uh, you you dated a Della Garcia, right? I mean, not mm -hmm. for nothing, but I mean, uh, you know, and uh, you know, my ex-wife's mulatto, her father's mm -hmm. black, her mother's white. You know, my children are part uh, quarter black. You know, it's, it's, it's who cares? Yeah, the, thing, the thing about them is, it's not their race. It doesn't matter. They're just fucking crazy from Puerto Rico. Yeah, <laughs> but that's one of my favorite flavors, though. I love that that Latina shit. Ooh, I love that. I had to dodge a few fry pans every now and then. <laughs> oh, but I to, I mean, it's funny you say that because this one I was dating he used to hit me with a frying pan all the time. And that's the you thing. Know, like, I if, I, if I was that way, like you know, my ex-wife, my ex-wife, my wife, there admitted she punched me once, and then she was scared. I didn't do anything back. I just went, yeah. It's like, okay, you want to hit me? You hit me. It's like you don't fucking. Go back at him now. Now, if I had a crazy woman on the street coming to kill me, I might, you know, punch her in the face. If she was coming to do me harm, I'm going to defend oh, myself. But you have to give equal rights with equal lefts. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know that's bullshit. I don't. I don't like that shit. You can't touch. You know. Mm -hmm. I watched. I watched the video once. Did you see it? And it was so funny. It was even on the talk shows. The view on that. This guy had come out of a club, and his missus was there. Uh, uh, they're arguing about something, and she went fucking whack. Whack her right in his face, and he's like, "Just go away, leave me alone." Walks over to him again, whack, punches him again. I mean, like flat out hit him. And he's hmm. like, "Just leave me." And like he walked away four times. The fifth time he pu she punched him, he turned around and went whack. She fucking went boom. All of a sudden, you should never hit a woman. But I'm thinking he gave her five <laughs> fucking chances. He said, "Walk away, leave me alone," and she slogged him hard. So if you're going to go up to a man and keep doing that, you know, if you suddenly get hit, but they're like, "You should never do that." I'm thinking. What do you mean you should never do that? Five times she punched him. <laughs> you know, you're pushing your luck there. So on the fifth or sixth time, if he retaliates, I'm sorry, you fucking deserve that. He told you, go away, don't come near me. And she kept coming back. It's like, come on, you're only asking for it. Spence, fuck that. You got to protect yourself. You never know. What There's women who have killed their boyfriends and shit. Oh, no, that's the thing, too. Yeah. You always see it when they say, well, look at your size to her. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. like, so I've been on pre those police ride alongs. I've seen little young girls who probably weigh 120 pounds. It takes like a crazy, crazy drunk or on drugs. It takes like three or four cops to hold this little thing down. When they're going batshit, it doesn't matter the size of the person or anything. That no, that no. crazy strength where they're out of their mind. And then, like you said, you're trying to contain them without hurting them, which makes it worse. Sometimes you've got to get physical. Yep. If I can control. When these people go, oh, you shouldn't have been that rough with them. Sometimes you got to be rough. You can't control these people being all nice and just holding their hands. They're going ape shit. Sometimes you got to fucking lay the elbow or the knee into them just to fucking get them down. Oh, these yeah. fucking self righteous people. Oh, you're a bit rough. That's police brutality. I was like, what? It's like, mm -hmm. and if someone's coming at me with a knife, I'm going to shoot them. So it's simple. Yeah. Oh, but they got mental problems. Yeah, obviously they come at you with a knife. Now I've taken care Absolutely. of their mental problems. Mm -hmm. One less mental person we have to worry about. Then. Over here in New York, though, Lee, they could put a gun, they could put a knife to your neck and start slicing your neck. Well, I saw that. I saw that guy. I remember that guy who had that convenience store in America where the guy did he shoot him or stab him, and then the store owner shot the guy that attacked him, and he got put up on charges. I'm like, wait yeah. a minute, these people tried to kill the old guy. He kills him, and the old guy's in trouble. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Come on. Yeah, the bodega guy took the knife and fucking stabbed the, the guy trying to kill him, and he went to jail yeah. for it. You know, it's yeah. all about the guy and it's the, the guy that was trying to threaten to kill everybody on a train, and that mm-hmm. kid oh, yeah. got behind choked him, and, he, and you know he, he held the choke too long, but he fucking yeah. killed the guy. You know what I'm and saying? And what about the other one that got let off not long ago? But I think he actually got let off where the guy on the train pulled a gun, and the person disarmed him and shot the guy with his own yeah. gun. Yeah, that guy too. They arrested him at first, but they, then yeah. they had to let him go because the video showed there were people on that train, like with videos up saying, "Listen, he pulled the gun yeah. away from the guy." And yeah. it, it, I think as he pulled the gun away, the guy it shot the guy, and then he shot him yeah. two or three times. But you know, you, you know, you can't. But in this New York is where I live. Fucking forget, it's bad. I mean, it's, yeah, it's exactly. he's over in New York and Jersey too. And Jersey too, yeah. Lee, yeah, can you carry a gun? I probably be in carry, I'm convicted. Uh, for one. I, was in, I, I have gun charges on me. So I can't do it. Now I was gonna say, Lee, can uh, you carry a gun in Australia? In Australia, get... no, we had that. We had that. We had to hand all our weapons in. Yeah. Only oh, like wow. okay. To have a gun, well, put it this way: there's still shootings here, and it's all gang violence. The gangs in Melbourne, or mm-hmm. that, the drug people still have the guns. Us innocent people, who are normal gun owners, sensible gun owners, we're not allowed to have them, but the criminals still have them. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> have rifles, right? You have hunting guns over there, right or wrong? Uh, the farmers and that do, but for us normal people to have them, you can't have them. So if you wanted to go hunting, you, you'd yeah. have. To, would you? Could you get a permit? Oh, you'd have to go through a whole big process where they probably. You used to go them. hunting. Holy shit! Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, you'd have to keep it. Maybe join a gun club and keep it there at the club. Or holy you know, shit! Yeah, yeah, like everyone had like an amnesty where if they had you on the register of owning a gun, they gave you a deadline to hand it in. If you didn't hand it in, they'll come get it and fine you for not handing the weapon in. I remember that when they did that. That was a big thing because that was like, mm-hmm. you know, that was bad for you guys. Mm-hmm. Just oh, you know, they're they're you know they can control. It's like I said, all the criminals still have them. So <laughs> yeah, well, well, criminals got them. A criminal will find a way to get that shit anyway. No, no, and they're not going to hand their gun. The criminals not going to be like, wait a minute, this gun's not registered. I'm not going to go to the police station and hand it in. So look at over here. They just busted like these. Now, now the new thing is like you know people get to squat in your house and your home. Uh, so they just busted these kids. They they were spotting these migrants. These illegals, they were spot. They they were you know, squatting in a house in the Bronx. They go in there. They had a seven year old locked in the basement. They don't even know who the seven year old belongs to. Oh my okay. god! They have no idea of that because the seven year old, I don't think he speaks English. Okay, or she speaks English. She was you it's know. Okay, and that's all right. I used to do the same to my daughter when she was young. <laughs> they still believe that shit. So they'll take that little clip and say, "See, <laughs> see, we told you, we told you, we told you." But the thing is, though, when they arrested these guys, who've just been in the country, you know, like a couple months. They're, you know, they're really, they really, oh, they have yeah. a nice car, and they they have fucking all kinds of handguns and shit like that. And you're like, "Holy shit," you know. And these are mm-hmm. these are illegal, you know, migrants and stuff. So yeah, it's in insane. New Jersey, you can get a permit now to carry, but it's really hard. You got to go through a lot now. They're you starting to ease up. Someone said, "When I'll be back in California?" Probably yeah, now we're going to be back after after the Olympia. I think maybe after the Olympia, I'll be back in California. After Olympia, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, well, let's see what the guy said. Wow, illegal! You guys are the best. Yeah, that's the same as the same as in Australia, the UK criminals yeah. and the police. <laughs> that's it. I just want to see if I want to go out and do something. I got to do the old school fucking knife them or beat them with a bat. I know. School. <laughs> if they get that bad at it, you know, you always risk the, ch- you know, the chances. Oh, I put, I put the Jim Reaper's wrist straps on and hold on to the back. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, I just want to say, uh, Joe did an interview with uh, Buff Bagwell, right? Am I correct, Joe? Yes, Buff Bagwell. Bagwell yes. Yeah. Wrestler, so if you guys Bagwell. want to see a good interview, we'll look on here on on Joe's channel. Yeah, he was a great guy. He's a wrestler, and I got um, he's got another one coming up with um with uh, 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 Mark uh, Merrow. Uh, who? Mark Merrill and then Diamond Dallas Page. Remember, Diamond on. Dallas Page. Joe and Joe yeah. Pietaro and I interviewed Diamond Dallas Page. Great guy. Diamond Dallas Page is a great guy. I know. So, but that's you know. So, just letting you guys know. Look at the Buff Bagwell thing. But yeah. I like at least playing with that cat's tail there. Wow! Look at that playing with his tail. Get some uh, getting some tail, huh? Holy! Getting that, exactly. getting that freaking. I love pussy. Pussy. <laughs> that's what people don't understand. It. You're an animal lover, so this oh. you know you got cats, so you can obviously relate to it. But uh, there's so many animal lovers. Where are the other people that like oh. you know that are sticking? I just can't believe all of them are defending him about it, saying I ruined his career. That is this and no, that is like he did it to himself. It's like. Yep. You can't put shit like that on the internet these days and think it's never going to show up. It's like someone's going to find it. And there, uh, there were a lot of Mexicans, though, that did fake me. They're like, oh, 
we're glad you brought this out, Lee. Even though it was a year ago, they did a little story on it here on the local news, but nothing ever happened. He never got really in trouble for it. So to me, it's just like getting away with it. And like they said, karma doesn't matter. When it comes around, it's going to come no, around. And that's right. it's like he probably thought he got away with it. But like I said, what did he do that he never filmed? That, that wouldn't have been the first time he's ever abused an animal, I'm sure. Right, of course. He filmed this yeah. shit. So yeah. we don't know how many friggin' animals he did. You know, it could have done it to dogs, cats, could other killed, animals. Or humans. Hmm? You know, yeah. pulled the wings off a bird or something like that. You know, he's I don't probably got, He's probably got people in his basement. That's right. He's got yeah. a... He's got migrants locked up in his basement, probably. Yeah, I'm surprised, yeah. like, uh, you know, somebody, I'm just shocked that nobody else made a big stink about that because, you know, that's a mm. big thing. People today with PETA and all that shit, you know, remember Obama killed a fly and they, <laughs> they made a thing about that and Obama fucking actually apologized. Oh, you know, maybe it's, not a, it's a great decision to do. But remember Obama mm. there and went back and killed a fly and it, they yeah. made it, PETA's like, you killed a fly. You know what I mean? Oh. Mm-hmm. That's like oh, that's a bit obsessive. But I'm like you. You try not to. If I can, if I can let the fly out, I do. But if it's just annoying in the house and the cats are going crazy trying to get, like, give it the old. Psst. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to be honest, with you, I can't have flies around. Well, especially the blow flies. They carry the maggots and they put maggots everywhere in the garbage. Oh, shit. And- yeah, but see, I like you know, if you leave food open or something like that, you find that's in the bag of your friggin' food or whatever. Like you know, they get mm-hmm. in your food and shit. So I'm I'm paranoid. Like I hate flies, man. I freaking hate flies. I hate, I'm allergic to bees, so I don't really like bees. You know, the yellow jackets are the ones, you know, those are not really ever right. bees, but they're, you know, there's some monster freaking yellow jackets out there. I can't stand them. Them all, I'm sorry, but, you know, they got to go, you know. Lee, when are you coming back to the U.S., you said? June. June, June I'll be in June. Nashville. Beginning of June, I'll be in Nashville for that fitness expo. And oh, yeah. then I'm not sure whether Rob from Apollo is going to try bring me up there then but also while i'm there i was just speaking to jim reapers jim reapers there you go they're looking to maybe sign me to a contract and i might have to go there and do some stuff too so it'll be june in june Mm -hmm. yeah okay good good i think uh jimmy said he was gonna might go with you to nashville i don't know Uh, well that you know let's see jimmy might jimmy might have come to the olympia jimmy might have come (laughs) jimmy had every opportunity out of classic i had a big room two beds Dave mm-hmm. was going to pay their fare. He didn't come. Vegas, the same thing. I had the big room, a suite with a separate bedroom. Jimmy didn't come. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Don't get your hopes up. Don't get your hopes up. Uh, man. But yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do something again up here. We'll, I'll get some good food. This time, no roast beef. Yeah. No <laughs> roast beef. We'll definitely do it. Well, was, guys, I'm going to wrap up. When I come over here, I'll get junk. You say get mostly junk. So I figured, okay, I'll get like freaking muffins and shit you know yeah, that was good but just not the bleedy bleedy vagina on bleeding toast stuff. Yeah. <laughs> i like that the bleeding <laughs> the bleeding moot the bleeding moot there's a word americans don't use moot moot, moot. what is that what? All right, we're oh. gonna be what hold on we have we have an oh my god moment you guys natalia and ben have been asking questions like crazy and you've only answered one. Oh, hold on she's like natalia and ben have been asking questions like crazy about it okay let's see what have they been asking? I don't know. I'm cooking. But Let's I'm see. Just... Lee reminds me of the late British bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. He could have <laughs> yeah, been a pro. Yeah. Let's what were see. The other ones? Just keep your, keep your ass in the kitchen where you belong and stop watching <laughs> questions on the fucking thing, okay? <laughs> yes. You know. Sometimes, like I said, look, I don't agree with what O.J. Simpson did, but let's but, just say I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's been an hour already, guys, so we're probably going to wrap up as it is. Like I said, um, well, it's nice. To, it's nice to hijack the show and come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love having you guys on. I love having you guys. Oh on. boy, you got to be kidding me, man! Freak yeah, that. You guys come in. I, Johnny Bravo was going to jump on, but he said next. I didn't. Time I didn't know. I didn't know. Oh, this is for a stream yard, isn't it? That's why. Yes. Yeah, streamer. Yeah, so we'll do it again for next week. I'll have Jump to work time. Do that. YouTube, YouTube, you can only have the two on, can't you? Yeah. yeah it's, now, it's, now, now, now I can do the thing right. like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now I can. You, get have, you have on. to tell me. You have to tell me how to connect the streamyard to the YouTube. Yes, Lee and I did that. Lee and I were on the phone, and we're like, "Wait a minute, we hear each other. We're talking. We're like, we're still on the WhatsApp phone call. 
Yeah, the WhatsApp. You can't. We're so almost. We're talking to each other on the phone. I'm like, I can hear you fine. You can hear me, but nobody can. And it's because we were on the phone talking. We're looking. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. hey, we're on the phone we we're like wait a minute how come we can't get this goddamn thing to work i hear you i can't yeah. but i can't see you and we're because yeah. we're on the phone with each other greg, like, greg was making me look bad if you were a fucking woman i would have beat the hell out of you <laughs> <laughs> and when you're hey, unconscious, you when, when, you're unconscious <laughs> when you're knocked out unconscious i would have did the old bill cosby <laughs> <laughs> you know i don't identify as a woman today yeah yes. hey, exactly you just well, let me know so i know when to beat you Yep. <laughs> I got the wig. You got Thanks. the wig. All right. Well, we'll do this next Thursday again live. Uh, Lee, thank you so much, brother. Grim Reaper. Oh, thank you. You thank know, you. Uh, YouTube, you thanks for uh, not beating anyone today. Uh, the day's still young. Oh, stay <laughs> still young. Okay. <laughs> Greg, I love you, brother. You know love that. You thanks to everyone love in the you. comments. I love you, bro. I love you, John Joe. Mancini. Well, I got, I got Italia, go. Todd I Morrison. It's 12 o'clock. I've still got time. I'm going to go kick a few cats and slap the wife around. Yeah. It's just for entertainment. Nicholas, <laughs> thank you, Nicholas. Then thank you, you to come over, beat her too. Yeah. yeah I'll, 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 I've got a gift for you. When she comes here, pow, right in the mouth. <laughs> she comes through the door. And, when, and make sure when you go out to get gas gas later in that's your car, how, you wear a white hood with just all of it. It's <laughs> that's, how, how, that's how us Mexicans do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Love you guys. Bye, Mike. I love you guys. Keep going, bro. All right.